It was three years ago now that I first entered the new world. My debut as a beautiful rookie set the world aflutter with excitement. I appeared in each day's newspaper without fail and all my gorgeous wanted posters were stolen away by the adoring ladies. What a star, the pirate noble White Horse Cavendish. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to take a look at the romantic with a dark side, White Knight Cavendish. Cavendish is a rather sophisticated, tall and regal fellow who first graced the series during the Dress Rosa arc. He is portrayed as extremely arrogant and prideful with his primary source of these feelings being his own aesthetic qualities. However, as a result, Cavendish very much expects the world to view him in the same way that he does and will often become extraordinarily angry when he is not the center of attention, sometimes going so far as to even kill whoever is garnering more attention than he. And a lot of this makes sense when we take the time to consider that Cavendish was born in the aptly named bourgeois kingdom. The location of which is currently unknown, but they have been shown to be an exceptionally wealthy nation. And Cavendish just so happens to be the prince of said nation. And even from childhood, he was greatly admired by the women of the kingdom. Something that's a bit uh, creepy to think about, but whatever. However, as a child, Cavendish would also be introduced to his lifelong friend, the faithful steed Farul. Farul is probably the most important figure in Cavendish's life. And rather remarkably, Cavendish has been shown to suspend his selfish tendencies should Farul require help. As Cavendish grew older, the bourgeois kingdom encountered an unprecedented problem due to his popularity with the ladies. At a certain point, all of the nation's women simply refused to get married unless it was to Cavendish himself. This dangerous popularity would lead Cavendish to being exiled from the kingdom, and so he fled, taking a total of 74 underlings with him, 500 million berries in cash, and of course, BFF horse, Farul. From there, Cavendish took up a life of piracy, dubbing his crew the beautiful pirates, and Cavendish proved incredibly successful due in no small part to his own sheer strength and prowess as a swordsman. In fact, Cavendish was even acknowledged by Vice Admiral Bastille as a genius of the sword, capable of performing feats such as air slashes and deflecting bullets. Cavendish also happens to carry a Mato grade blade known as Durandal, which is a rapier, although its exact grading is unknown. However, the true power of Cavendish is only revealed in his alter ego, Hakuba. Interestingly enough, Cavendish has an odd combination of narcolepsy, sleepwalking, and dissociative identity disorder. The fusion of these three traits results in an entity named Hakuba gaining command of Cavendish's body at regular intervals. Whilst Hakuba is awake, Cavendish's speed increases tremendously, moving too fast for human eyes to track, and even relatively skilled observation Haki users can barely keep an eye on his movement. Not only that, but Hakuba also comes with enhanced skills in the art of swordplay, making him an exceptionally dangerous entity, especially when we consider that Hakuba will attack enemies and allies indiscriminately. At the time of this recording, Hakuba's origins are unknown. However, his legend was originally spread from the Rommel Kingdom, an equally mysterious location in the One Piece world that bears a striking similarity to modern London. Here, Cavendish as Hakuba allegedly terrorized the citizens, slicing them down at his trademark incredible speeds. And after he was unable to be caught by the Marines, Cavendish was given the nickname Kamaitachi of Rommel, Kamaitachi being a particular kind of yokai in Japanese mythology. And so Cavendish continued to build his infamy, masking in all of the attention he was receiving, even if it was for, you know, primarily negative reasons. And three years prior to the modern timeline, Cavendish was even able to enter the new world, which was roughly a year before Luffy and the rest of the supernovas arrived on Sabadi Archipelago. And this year gap would represent some very, very poor timing, as Cavendish was kind of put to the side in the eyes of the world in favor of giving their attention to this incredible new group of rookies making waves. Now, as expected, Cavendish was not pleased by this, not pleased at all, causing him to generate great resentment towards the supernovas who would grow to become known as the worst generation. And following the two year time skip, he made a teeny tiny vow to kill each and every one of them. And an opportunity to complete a portion of which would come up during the Dress Rosa arc, where Cavendish had entered the Corridor Coliseum in order to obtain the Mera Mera no Mi, hoping that such a prize would attract some of the worst generation. And he was right, as Cavendish would go on to realize that a certain Monkey D. Luffy was also participating after being initially misled by his alias Lucy. However, Luffy disappeared before Cavendish could act. Unfortunately for Cavendish, he and Luffy were not placed in the same group blocks, and he had no choice but to watch as Luffy in Lucy persona pulled off spectacle after spectacle and completely won over the Coliseum crowd, with their cheers deeply sickening Cavendish. 
Up next was Cavendish's block, and just prior to the commencement of the battle, Cavendish showed a true sense of nobility when the audience started booing Rebecca and angrily demanded her death. So Cavendish literally rode in on a white horse and chastised them for wishing ill of someone whilst not being willing to risk their own lives. To which the audience reacted, you know, surprisingly well, and began cheering him, filling Cavendish with overwhelming joy. During the actual battle royale, though, Cavendish would be subject to his narcolepsy, and Halkaba took control, managing to dispatch all of the remaining combatants with the lone exception of Rebecca, who was adept enough to dodge him. After this short burst, Hakuba vanished, leaving Cavendish asleep and disqualifying him from the contest. He was then taken to the medical room and turned into a toy by the nefarious powers of Sugar, a member of the Don Quixote Pirates. Completely powerless in this state, Cavendish had no choice but to put his hopes in the hands of the straw hat pirate Usopp, who, how shall we put this, rather unconventionally succeeded in breaking Sugar's powers. And from that moment on, Cavendish made a vow to cease all hostilities against Luffy as his thanks. Cavendish, along with most of the Colosseum fighters, then led a revolt against Don Quixote do Flamingo, with his most notable action being the defeat of the officer Dellinger with a single slash in Hakuba form. However, Hakuba would then go on to be subdued by Nico Robin, who essentially possesses a devil fruit that is a hard counter to his speed. But this moment would go on to show us that Cavendish is able to wrest control of his own body back from the clutches of Hakuba. And the two had something of an inner battle going on, with Cavendish eventually proving capable of suppressing him entirely. And following the defeat of Dolph Flamingo by the fist of Luffy, Cavendish and the beautiful pirates would become one of seven groups that pledged their allegiance to Luffy and formed the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, marking a radical shift from his once selfish desires to be the center of attention to wanting to be part of something greater than he alone could ever achieve. Although with that said, Cavendish does still retain his attention-seeking ways, as demonstrated by his part in the Straw Hat Grand Fleet cover story, where he regales Suleiman with the tale of how he was exiled from the bourgeois kingdom. But as it stands right now, Cavendish is one of many apostles who have made it their mission to spread the good word of Luffy throughout the world, and has no doubt greatly contributed to him being considered as one of the emperors of the new world. Some more fun facts about Cavendish. Cavendish, as with many characters in the series, shares his name with a real life figure, in this case being the English privateer Thomas Cavendish. With that said, his name may also be taken from Cavendish Square, a location that features in the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is a clear inspiration for Cavendish's split personality. Speaking of, interestingly enough, Hakuba, as spelt in kanji, quite literally means white horse, which is Cavendish's prime epithet. And finally, a truly useless fact, Cavendish is the second royal figure in the series to have been banished from his home country, the first of whom was Wapol. But that pretty much does it for Cavendish. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece, 101.